Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at the new upgraded Inwin Chopin Pro. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the new upgraded Inwin Chopin Pro Edition, as you can see here. Now there's been a couple of modifications done to this, so we've got a few extra nice features, such as we've got a range of colours. This one is in the titanium colour. There's also an option for silver and a darker colour as well, which you can check out on their website. Inwin have actually sent this to us free of charge for review purposes. And one of the reasons that actually I'm really glad of this is we've actually just upgraded one of our mini ITX PCs to a Ryzen 5 5600G processor. Now sadly, the Inwin B1 case that we're currently using isn't always the best for airflow. So with the Chopin, as you can probably see already, we've got this really nice open mesh effect on the top and also on the sides, etc. So airflow and heat management is going to be considerably better. So let's go through some of the specs of the new case and see what has changed, see what is different, and see what there is to like about this particular case. So the first thing of note, which actually is a particularly great upgrade, especially for those with small form factor builds, which are looking at higher and higher core counts, is the new upgraded 200 watt gold rated power supply with up to 90% efficiency. That is a excellent improvement, especially now as again, processors are getting more and more complex, more and more cores, onboard graphics are getting more and more intensive, and the actual wattage that these processors needs is creeping up gradually and gradually. So even if you're using something like a Ryzen 7 1700, when you overclock that as well, you can hit up to around about 180 watts. So this is going to be absolutely fine. Again, we're using it with the Ryzen 5 5600G, which is going to be nowhere near those limits. Some other cool features of this is the actual fact this is only a 3.3 litre chassis, but even though it can hold an extra two, two and a half inch drives in the bays which are in the rear, and also there's plenty of room inside for cable management, which is very unusual for a chassis this small. The measurements are 244 by 84 by 217 mil, so yeah, it is pretty small and will fit in most places. The weight of it is actually pretty low as well, so if you are planning on building one of these and using it as a portable rig to take around places, it's only 2.2 kilos in its net weight. On the power supply, we've got some good connectivity there, so we've got a 24-pin main power connector from modern motherboards, we've also got an 8-pin EPS connector, and also there is a single SATA connector, but they do actually include a splitter in the box, which will then double that up. So if you want to use those two, two and a half inch drives in the rear, then you certainly can do. And all of this is backed up with a awesome three year warranty. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we actually get in the box. Now, obviously you get the case itself, which we'll take a look at in more detail later on, but accessory wise, there's actually quite a few things in here, which we get. So obviously you get your bag of screws, which is good for attaching motherboard, drives, etc., etc. There's also included a eight pin to eight pin EPS extension. So if you've got one of those slightly unusual ITX motherboards where your EPS pin is in a slightly unusual place, no worries, got you covered straight out of the box. Also, when it comes to the SATA drives, we've got this SATA splitter, like we said. So you can put this into the single SATA connector of the power supply and connect up two additional drives. One thing we don't get is a user manual, but you can just scan the QR code on the card included and you can get all the details from there. Or obviously you can go over to Inwin's website. A slightly unusual feature, which you do get, is also the option for colour coding. So these are some plastic inserts, which you can use on the case. So this one here has got the USB cutouts and the power button outputs. So all you need to do is to basically stick on your particular colour of choice. And we've got the option of a green, blue, orange, and a red. I'm not too sure who actually needs these or wanted them. I actually quite like the look of it in its standard configuration. Let me know what you think in the comments. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the actual case itself. And as you can see, this is an extremely small form factor. Like I said before, 3.3 liters is the actual internal capacity. And height-wise, and kind of the amount of room it's gonna take up on your desk or in maybe your media center cabinet is very, very little. But still, we've got some excellent cooling, which is always problematic with these smaller ITX builds. Looking on the side, you can see here, we've got that full mesh cutout. We do actually have up to 43 mil of room for clearance for CPU coolers in here. Sadly, you're not gonna be able to put in your Wraith Spire or Wraith Stealth. That still is a little bit over the top of that, so that isn't gonna fit. So you will need to think about your cooling in this. There are obviously options open from these like Noctua, Gelid, etc., etc. So do bear that in mind. The stock cooler from AMD will not fit in here. Also on this side, we've got our USB and our IO. So we've got two USB 3.0 ports and also a separate microphone and headphone jack. At the top here is a power button, nice clicky little power button. 
and it's all embellished by this really nice bezel which goes all the way around the outside in this brushed metal effect again this is the titanium version you've also got the inwind logo on the uh i wasn't saying on the top but technically it's the side but it depends how you actually mount it you can if you want to you can use this in the flat configuration so putting it onto the desk or again in a media setup that kind of thing you can put it flat if you wish to they don't actually include any rubberized feet or anything which i've liked to have seen for this actual type of layout and actually in all of their publications documentation they never actually show it flat but obviously the inwind logo being where it is kind of does edge towards that and give you that idea that it can be done although they don't specifically say it can or can't moving on to the bottom so we do have those rubberized feet here on what is technically the bottom if you have it in the vertical mounting section and also at the top we've got this ventilation area here so when you've got your motherboard in here this is going to be in and around the area of where the vrms are going to be so you can have your downdraft cooler which you've got no choice it's going to have to be a downdraft cooler so that's going to be pulling air in and through this mesh circulating around the system and then ventilating out the top there aren't actually any fans as such in here as in case fans obviously there isn't a great deal of room to do that although there is a fan on the power supply which will bring in cool air to the power supply and then exhaust it out the rear which we'll take a look at now so on the back nothing uh, too outrageous here we've got our standard atx style cutout here for itx boards and at the bottom there you've got your power connection for that 200 watt power supply again a little bit of ventilation there not a great deal but again this is only a 200 watt power supply it is gold rated so it's not going to be generating the tremendous amount of heat and it's going to be easy to exhaust that out the back on the bottom or side again depending on how you actually have this laid out so we've got an in-wind logo on there and also there's some additional ventilation here and here so this is going to pull cool air from the bottom if it's in the vertical orientation and this is going to pass cool air over your disk drives and then exhaust it out this top section this is going to be passive but it should do a pretty decent job so let's take this thing apart and take a little closer look inside so easy to do all you need is a cross-headed screwdriver I would have liked to have seen this to be in kind of a push panel or something which you can just slot off. That would have been quite nice, but okay, it's not the end of the world. And they do put these little tabs on there because these side panels are actually quite tough to get off. They are in place very well. Okay, there's the side panel there. Quite nice, quite thick metal actually, very well constructed. And in this rear section gives you access to your drive bays. So both of these bays are actually removable. There's a screw for this one, just undo the screw and you can pull the drive back. It is actually held in place with a retention clip. And the same goes for the bottom one. So again, two drives in there. And you've got a little bit of extra room in there for possibly some cable management for those SATA cables should you use them. Flipping the case round onto the other side, again, same deal. So just a single screw. And then you can push this side panel off. And you can see there the mesh is actually raised a little bit. This does give your CPU cooler a little bit of extra height available there. Not, again, not a tremendous amount. We still do have that 43 mil limitation on the CPU cooler. So looking inside, again, this is a, an extremely small chassis. There's a, a lot going on here, but should be pretty easy to manage. And actually when you pull the cables out of the way, it should be pretty easy to put a motherboard in, which we will be doing a little bit later on. You can see at the bottom there, we've got our power supply in there, which is easy to remove, just two screws. That is swappable, so you can actually swap it out and put another one in. Obviously it is gonna be one of Inwin's own, so you can do that, should for some reason the power supply fail. Again, you do get a three year warranty, so you should be absolutely fine with that. Looking at connectivity, so we've got a few options here. So the first one is your kind of front panel IO connector. Nice to see that this is all wired into a single block, makes life considerably easier. Also, there is your traditional HD audio connection. There's the USB 3.0 and these nice flexible cables. And coming off the power supply, we've got a few connectors here. So we've got our main 24 pin connection for the motherboard, which does split. So if you've got a 20 pin version, which is unlikely, but potentially you might have, you can split that down. Next one is the EPS connector again, which is our four plus four or eight pin. Again, that separates should you need to. On some smaller ITX boards, because of the actual amount of room you've got there, you may actually have to do that if it is only a four pin connection. And also again, there is the extension. So you can plug the extension into there to give you even more room. Although saying that, this cable is pretty long and again, depending on where you put it, you should find it reaches most places. Also off of this is a single SATA connector. So again, all blacked out cabling, single SATA. And again, if you want to put two drives in, then all you need to do is to grab the included splitter, plug it into there, and then you can plug in two drives in the back. One thing of note is all of the pillars actually are pre-installed in this, which in some ways is great because obviously it aids installation. But when it actually comes to taking out the power supply, you do have to be a little bit careful with it. It does actually catch on one of the pillars. So you have to undo both of the screws for the power supply. 
lever this side up slightly, then away from the back of the motherboard, like the pillars, and then you can take out. It's relatively straightforward to do, but it doesn't come straight out because of the pillar being machined into the case. So I think that's pretty much it for breaking down the case. Let's get this thing installed and do some tests and see if it actually is considerably cooler than our previous installation. Okay, so we've done the uh, the build, as you can quite easily see, and I can only explain it as being one of those things that reminded me of my first date. A lot of fumbling around in places that I didn't know what I was doing, and uh, it soon became second nature. This is a, not an easy case to work with, if I'm completely honest with you. Because of the diminutive size of the 3.3 litre capacity, obviously there is some dexterity required. Now, actually, you can probably see from some of the B-roll, which you'll be seeing on your screens now, it actually still looks pretty clean. And working out where the cables go, again, your motherboard may differ, so you may find things slightly easier or slightly harder. In the case of this particular board, which is the ASRock B550M ITX-AC, some of the... Uh, kind of positioning is a little bit awkward. The USB Type 3 connection in particular was a little bit tricky, but yeah, we managed to get around it. Something which actually has uh, actually blown me away is actually how quiet this machine is. Now, literally it is no more than about eight inches away from me. My lav mic is here, the PC is there, and all I can hear is the PC behind me. It is exceptionally quiet. Now, most of that is in thanks to the fan actually on the power supply. Power supply fan, even though it is a very tiny one, about 30 mil, it's absolutely silent. And with the notch or cooler on there as well, it's made this thing absolutely insanely quiet. That is under idle loads or very low usage. As we hit things like games, which you'll be seeing some gameplay now, or some examples of the 5600G in this particular case, playing Far Cry New Dawn, things do get a little bit noisier. The fan does ramp up and the temperatures also do ramp up as well. Because of the fact that we are using a very small height cooler in here, it does get rather warm. And actually, it was only a few degrees cooler than the original InWin B1, which I've been using previously, which I was actually I was quite surprised at. So it seems that it isn't actually anything to do with the particular design of the case, the fact that it's very open. Even with the side taken completely off, we only saw a reduction in temperatures of about one degree. So that is within margin of error. The room itself is about 23 degrees C, and we were seeing temperatures somewhere in the upper 70s so still quite warm although amd have come out and said that these processors can run up to 95 degrees which probably to a lot of people seems a little bit on the high side but actually it runs very well didn't see any obvious signs of throttling and the games played absolutely brilliantly again as you've probably seen from some of the cutaways and some of the footage another thing which is of interest actually for some of you if you want to save a little bit of money you don't want to go out and spend a ton of money on an additional cooler the stock cooler actually did fit. So taking off the top AMD kind of uh, ring at the top, there is a screw underneath. You undo the screw and you can pull that entire piece off. It then actually does fit. Again, you've probably seen some footage of that already. And it is very, very close. It's literally the plastic is touching the, uh, the foil there. It doesn't actually restrict the airflow a great deal. Still seems to work quite well, although the stock cooler still doesn't work as good as the Notchua cooler. So if you want a little bit more performance and you want to have things a little bit quieter, then I would definitely consider upgrading your cooling system. But we're not talking about cooling system, we're talking about the case itself. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't really expecting a great deal. Considering how small it is and what you have to actually put in there to get a computer to run, even with cases as large as the one behind me, we still have our everyday issues of trying to keep the temperatures under control. We've got obviously crazy things in there like 10 fans, a 360 mil AIO, and still the temperatures can get up into the 70s. So the fact that this little machine at 3.3 litres can get to in the, around the sort of same ballpark figures with integrated graphics for a mini PC. I think this is absolutely brilliant. And one of the other things which really is actually a re really good benefit, and I suppose this isn't really unique to this particular case, but the fact that literally we've got one wire sticking out the back. We've got Wi-Fi provided by the motherboard, keyboard and mouse on a dongle. So if you want a really, really clean looking desktop and you want it to look a little bit flash, then I think this is actually well worth a look. It works very well. I've done the temperature test in both the upright configuration and actually with the unit flat on the deck, which is uh, very easy to do. Just convert straight down, just put it on the floor like that. There is no difference in the temperatures whatsoever. So yeah, depending which way you want to do it, if you want to have it in a media center console, you can do it that way. If you want it on the desktop, then you can do it that way. And again, it doesn't have any detrimental effect on the cooling performance whatsoever. So overall, would I recommend this case? 
Yes, but with some caveats. Do expect to have your wiring abilities challenged, because obviously it is an extremely small form factor. But other than that, if you don't mind actually getting involved, working out where your wiring's going, you're going to be absolutely fine. I would say for a first time or a novice builder, possibly I would maybe steer away or at least watch a few videos, see how it all goes together and then take your time and do it. You can do it. You may not get it quite as neat as we have done in there, but yes, you will get it done. But for experienced builders or for those who just want a second PC for maybe the living room or the office or study or something like that, then yeah, this ticks a lot of boxes. The fact that we get the actual case itself, we get the power supply included for somewhere in the region of somewhere about $120 in America at the moment. I think this is fantastic value for money and it looks absolutely amazing. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.